Hi guys! So I deleted my YouTube videos and I also deleted my Instagram account and my Facebook. Um, it's a tricky thing because I definitely don't want to be on social media. Um, it's not for me. Um, I remember a time without it uh, when I was a young adult. Um, and so it's not a scary thing for me to go without social media. Uh, I definitely think, let me just put it this way. There hasn't been a single day since I deleted it. There hasn't been a single minute or a moment that I have wanted it back. <laughs> there is one thing I've wanted back and that's just some tether to the planner community because it is my hobby and it is my love and it is my passion. And while it may also be my coping mechanism, it is also still a genuine hobby and passion. I have a few people in my real life who are into stationery, but not nearly as much as me. And um, I just want to talk about stationery all the time and there's not really anyone <laughs> Is that into it? Um, so I think YouTube, even though I initially deleted it, it's probably the best way for me to keep participating. The only problem is I do not want to show the inside of my planners. I think it's a massive privacy issue. If you consistently put information out there um, and you think you're hiding, you're um, covering up, you know, important stuff but if you consistently put enough stuff out there I think it's a problem in today's day and age you know um so I don't want to do that and then that made me think I know nobody really wants to see just the outside of planners they really want to see insides and setups but then I thought you know what there'll still be like five people who want to see and watch my videos <laughs> and just for my thoughts on various products um out there and given how much I would be willing to talk, how much time I would be willing to spend talking about stationery with just one person in real life, it's like limitless, endless time, why not post these videos for the handful of people that want to watch them? So here they are. And I thought I would start with uh, this beautiful planner from Eternal Leather Goods. I'm just looking in my bookshelf because there's something I want to show you guys, but it's not there, so that's okay. All right, so Eternal Leather Goods. The first, oh, I know where it is. I'm going to go grab it. Hold on. Here it is. So this is my very first um, experience with Eternal Leather Goods. Um, it has got my passports inside it, so I won't open it up. But I got this leather. It's it's a passport traveler's notebook. And my initial thoughts were, this is perfectly made. It is gorgeous, but I'm not connecting with this particular leather for reasons that I can't even articulate. I just didn't love it. Um, this is something, it's a little, this one is just a little bit dry. Um, and just for some reason wasn't connecting. So I wasn't really going to buy more from Eternal Leather Goods, even though I think workmanship, communication, speed of producing custom, you know, planners and orders, you know, is sensational, phenomenal. I have so much respect for Colin, who I think runs the business. Uh, just, just phenomenally impressed. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure that it was for me. And so but then what happened is that I saw that he could make planners in this special leather called Cordovan leather. Cordovan leather is made from horse bum. <laughs> it's horse bum leather. It is, it's made from, I think, the rear part of a horse. It's extremely pricey because, um, I think, uh, because of a, yeah, I think, I think it, it's rare-ish because um, the part of the hide you can use is small or I'm not entirely sure why, but it's sort of rare-ish. However, it's got these really unique um, qualities to it and you can just Google Cordovan leather to look, at, look up those qualities. That makes it like a premium quality leather and traditionally it's used in super expensive shoes and it's got this shiny, reflective, mirror-like quality to it that does not dull 
so far with time i've used this for a couple of months no dulling whatsoever um and it's it's got a really like it's not thick right you can see that it's not thick it feels thick it feels really lush um and the first time i came across this was on the Baum kuhen website they sell a bunch of leather goods and planners it's b-a-u-m-c-a-u-c-h-e-n you can google that and they sell these a5 um slim planners and suddenly they started selling them in this leather and it was twice the price of their already quite pricey a5 slim uh, zip covers and i was like oh it looks really nice from afar but i don't use that size so i'm not going to get it but i kept window shopping it because it's so pretty and i like smooth leathers um i like lots of different types of leathers but i love this smooth shiny type of vibe um, and so I asked Colin if he could custom make me a planner with that leather, and he absolutely did. And not only did he make me this one using some of the Cordovan uh, leather colors that he already had on stock, I later asked him if he could get me some more girly colors like purple, red, <laughs> pink. Um, and he um, sort of reached out to his suppliers to come up with some options, and I chose this eggplant purple. It is stunning. It's eggplant purple on the outside, and it's this um, sort of natural, sort of coloured uh, cordovan leather on the inside. Um, it's just beautiful, and I love his stuff so much. These are both A6 ring. All three of these are A6 um, ring planners. You can ask him for you know different sized Kraus rings um, in silver and in gold. I really love 20 millimeter a6 rings and he had no problem at all supplying that um, no issues um, which I think is amazing and the uh, customizations I asked for is I asked it to be short uh, the width of the planner to be narrowed so that it's the same as the van der Speck senior unwidened options you can look at those dimensions on um, the van der Speck website um if you are interested um so it, you know the inserts kind of sit almost flush there is kind of room for um for inserts as you will see when i open this up if you have so, sorry there is room for tabs as long as you have really like a tiny tabs on the side um so i had it uh, narrowed to that size and then i also had what should be a slip pocket turned into a secretarial pocket um and i had that secretarial pocket shortened in width so it's easy to put like books inside here without them interfering with the rings i think it's just stunning um really beautiful work um his gold hardware just really pops out it's got a real gold feel to it rather than a, a brassy field and a uh, feel and i think it's gorgeous and the, the straps are just they come in a really chunky kind of size they're super cute um the work is perfect one thing about this cordovan leather is it will i think it must be quite hard um to sew because it does sometimes leave these like when he sews it it does leave uh, like bumps sometimes um where the leather doubles over and i think sometimes it's just something you can't help because of the nature of the leather and the sewing machine over the bumps and all of that stuff um it doesn't bother me but if you're into complete perfection um in those ways i, I want to point it out because you know they're not cheap and even if they're not cheap you've you've invested your funds into something it doesn't really matter what it costs you want it to be what you're expecting you know you might not want perfect but you you do want what you're expecting so um so this is my all blue cordovan um with the silver hardware and that's my egg pump purple and um, natural leather one but the one i wanted to rave about is this sensational beautiful black pebbled one I decided to give the pebbles another try because I just had a feeling that maybe this one might have just been the particular hide, the particular leather. Maybe it's just the color. I'm not really into this kind of brown. I know everybody in the planner community loves this camel brown, but it's not really my thing. So I thought I just want to try this size out in the pebbled leather. I think black would be great for me. 
Um, and so I asked him for like pebbles, small pebbles on the outside, uh, primarily on the outside, you know. Um, I asked for silver, I asked for white contrast stitching, um, and then the same dimensions as in my, uh, my other ones. And it is stunning. It's so great. Colin said that he'd be using slightly thicker leather to give it some more support so it's not overly floppy. Um, and this is what we've got. And it is perfect. Guys, I can't even, I've got no words. Like, I love this. So this one cost me 400 US dollars. So not cheap at all. It really is up there in the sort of Julio Van der Speck price range. However, the benefits are you can com completely customize it. It's properly handmade in the same sense that Van der Speck is handmade. I, I think Julio is not handmade in quite the same way. It's bulk made, you know, um, uh, it's made in small, but sorry, it's not bulk take that back it is not bulk made it's batch made it's made in small quantities um i don't know i'm just talking out of my you know <laughs> there's just i just feel like i've been around custom made goods and leather goods in the stationary realm as well as in other realms long enough to know that there is a difference between like a family or an individual sitting there and hand making goods or a very small company sitting there and hand making goods versus the kind of handmade products you get that are they look completely perfect in the sense that each one looks the same the leather might vary in grain and stuff but there's like i just don't know how handmade some of that stuff can be however that doesn't bother me like i don't need things to be you know, handmade in the small family sense. Um, but what I will say about that is the more small family, individual, like the more handmade it is, the more time an individual has to invest in that product, which means the more expensive it's actually going to be. So even if it doesn't look as perfect as like a batch made product that's made in a factory with loads of people in a line producing things, like different people in each line doing different things and, you know, a lot of industrial equipment um, involved, it's not going to look as perfect as something like that. But more human time is going into it which means it's more expensive or you know if someone's going to do that for a living and they pride themselves as being highly skilled and an artisan they're going to charge you higher rates so even though it's 400 usd um to me that makes sense for like what it is like you know it's it, it is very handmade crafted and it is very well done um and with eternal leather goods you can ask for pretty much anything you want colin will work with you to um, achieve that and he'll tell you if something you're asking for you know uh, might have problems attached to it if you're worried about certain things he'll t let you know if that's a real worry or not um and being a leather expert you know i trust what he says um and I think they take like a, just a little bit less than a month, which for such a highly custom good, I think is like fantastic time. It doesn't seem like a, a long wait at all to me. He's so flexible and um, efficient and I think he's great. So I wanted to do that video showing you this beautiful thing. Why do I love it so much? This one feels a lot softer than this one. I think if you are picky about these sorts of things, maybe just really like let him know in the email, like exactly what you're looking for. I'm sure he'll try his best. And if he doesn't have that, I'm sure he'll let you know. Um, I say that because uh, having worked with him with like, you know, five or so planners so far, I just have a lot of confidence um, in the professionalism and what he's putting out there, you know, similar to Petra from Andersbeck. And so, um, yeah, maybe just, ask and then you're less likely to be disappointed um i love it i think it's going to patina beautifully it is the perfect kind of pebbly texture and i just love this white contrast stitching um and i just think it's lovely i really love it squishy and just beautiful um it's got some structure but not you know not 
it's also very floppy but in a not overly floppy way i guess because he did use slightly thicker leather um, bearing all that in mind and it's everything i wanted so i wanted to show you guys that and i will come back with my b6 slim codex from so my next video is likely to be tomorrow b6 slim van der Speck codex custom and my planner perfect notebooks that are going in it all right thanks for coming with me guys bye